Hello and welcome to the latest This is the Music Meets podcast. I'm delighted to be joined by Derby indie rockers The Mees, who have just released their brand new single, High, Defin- High Definition, You Ain't Seen Nothing. As well as discussing the new single, we will talk about their explosive debut album, The World in High Definition, as well as the return of live music for the band. All this and much, much more on the This is the Music Meets The Mees podcast. Guy, Tristan, Welcome to the This Is The Music Meets podcast. How are you both doing? Yeah, good, thanks. Great, great to finally have you um, to have you both on and to, uh, to finally sort of meet you face to face, so to speak, rather than the uh, Instagram and, and Twitter conversations that we've had on and off. Um, so obviously, as we've said there in the intro, we've got we've got quite a lot to, to sort of get through today. But kind of like before we do, I want to go back really to the to the very, very beginning of the band. So Kind of like, how did it start, and where did you get the the, the band name from? Um, so, I guess we started out um, a couple of years ago now. I think, yeah, I think it was a couple of couple of summers back. So, I suppose, like me and me and Guy have known each other for a long time, um, and we've, um, yeah, we've always sort of we could both play guitar, so we're. we're we always sort of met up every now and again, had a bit of a jam. Yeah. Um, yeah, obviously played a few covers and stuff. Um, I think did did a couple of charity gigs years and years ago, um, just because, you know, our mates had sort of talked us into it kind of thing. And then, uh, yeah, then it sort of took a back seat for a while. Um, and then sort of during COVID, I guess we were pretty bored and uh, had some time had some time on our hands. Um, so, uh we uh yeah we kind of started working on a few of our own songs during during that time um and then and then you yeah, know as we kind of as we came out of that we thought right okay well let's you know start start playing a few um local open mic nights and then uh, managed to sort of get a few band couple of few band members together guys next door neighbor adam joined the band on bass and then uh, we got found drummer john on uh, on facebook i think so uh yeah it um yeah, it's all slowly came together from there, really. Great stuff. And 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 kind of like then sort of fast forwarding and then to sort of like where you are now. Um, obviously it's well known how difficult like the music industry is to sort of yeah. like break into and, and to sort of progress in. So when you kind of like look at like look back on on 2022, really, I guess in, in particular, and not like I guess the start of this year as well, sort of kind of like how do you feel that you've done in that? in that period of time um yes yeah, it's just, well yeah i guess it's, it's always difficult to say like i um i mean i think yeah we, i think we've made made a lot of big strides in 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 that period of time but I, it's always difficult to know really what to compare yourself to and i mean i think to start with when we set out we didn't really have a clue what we were doing like you don't even know you don't even know who you're supposed to speak to to like get a gig <laughs> like, you, you just you go around some local pubs and just say oh you know we're we're, we're a band can we play kind of thing yeah. um but i mean the internet definitely makes the world a much smaller place and uh yeah i i mean i guess go on accounts like yours on uh on, on like twitter and instagram uh things like that like you just you, you know you start to meet people um in who were, who were kind of into the same same sorts of things so yeah kind of, i guess as, as time's gone on we've sort of met more people virtually and then obviously subsequently in real life and uh yeah like as time's gone on like yeah more and more opportunities have opened themselves up to us and uh yeah we've like yeah we've done some like some gigs and things like that that have that feel pretty mad to us really that we've been like okay well yeah we're you know we we found ourselves last year on the stage in in the arena in derby yeah um, supporting a uh a, like an, an oasis tribute act but there's you know there's a good few hundred people there and it's like oh yeah, well this is it's all right isn't it so yeah you get yeah you have moments like that and you just think oh wow we've yeah we've 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 come a long way in a short space of time but it's like there's there's kind of so many bands out there. It's uh, it, yeah, it's always really difficult to sort of know who, who to judge yourself against. So you get, I guess you can only really sort of judge yourself against what things you want to do. And uh, and yeah, I think we're kind of we're sort of ticking off the bucket list one by one. I'd say. Great start. And obviously, you you've just sort of mentioned the whole um, like social media thing. So I'm gonna sort of 
put a slight spin on it, the question is that obviously we all know that pretty much most people now consume their music via Spotify. Yeah. Kind of like, how do you feel that has worked for you as a band? Is, 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 has it been beneficial? Um, or do you more sort of prefer, you know, I guess kind of like people like myself buying buying the vinyl and um, sort of playing, providing, I guess, maybe a little bit more support in, in terms of that aspect of it? Yeah, I mean, it's I guess it's a bit of a double-edged sword, Spotify, these days. Um, it's it's a good, I guess we say it's just it's a good shop window, really. It's it's where people can go and if, you know, if they've not heard the band before, they can just type us in on Spotify or Apple Music or whatever, and they've got access to our song straight away. So that, like, to me, that's that's really cool. And I think if if that wasn't so easy, if it wasn't as easy as it is these days to go and record music, like, I mean, like recording costs are a lot lower than, than they used to be because there's so much equipment available yeah, and software and things like that. So, yeah, so recording costs are much lower and it's, yeah, it's sort of, it's quite easy then to, yeah, to just distribute it, get it out there on Spotify. Um, You try not to, you know, try not to ref- refresh it every day and uh, see how many <laughs> streams you're on. It's, uh, you, know, it's, it, you, you can send yourself a bit mad if if you if you do that. Um, and yeah, and I, I guess it's like you've you've just alluded to, like it's obviously. I mean, obviously, it, clearly financially for us, it's better if someone buys someone buys a, it on a physical format. But also, like it, that's to me, that's the feeling of knowing that someone's you know some someone actually wants that, and you know wants to put the put the record on in their house is yeah it's just it's really cool and it means a lot to us so um like so yeah that's obviously in an ideal world everyone would be doing that but i think it's just yeah it's just cool that that anyone at any time you can just you, you can just point them to spotify and say oh well here it is here's our music go and have a listen sort of thing and uh yeah it's yeah i mean it's, it's amazing because like i mean you get Go on, obviously, Spotify and Apple Music and that. This send you all the all the reports of where your listeners are and stuff. And yeah, and yeah. When we had at one point last year, um, one of our singles, I think it got playlisted, so it was doing quite doing quite well on Spotify. And like half the listeners were in like in North America, so it was like, <laughs> oh, well, that's that's mad to think that there's, there's that, <laughs> many, that many people on the other side of the world that have listened to our song. Yeah, we'll, sure. we'll probably never never speak to or or know of. Um, I mean. Well, the the US tour might be a few years off yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got you got to dream big. That's what I always say. And um, hey, why not for something for something like that as well? So, kind of like then um, we'll talk about the new single, um, obviously called High Definition. You ain't seen nothing. Um, obviously, it came out um, on on so last Friday. Um, so, kind of like then. What because obviously effectively the the high definition part and obviously the, the music predominantly is obviously a sample that was obviously on um obviously on the album. So kind of like why why did you decide to sort of you know sort of how can I put it like I guess like re-record it in a in a kind of like roundabout way with you know like a rap on it and obviously you got like the the hip hop beats. Where was what was the the idea behind that? So I, mean, I guess that's that song has been kind of been knocking around for quite a while and I always liked it as the album title um but it was like the original song was much different and it was it, you know it was more of a sort of kind of an acoustic kind of number and a bit a bit slower in tempo um and then kind of came around to recording the album I still wasn't quite satisfied with with that tune but I sort of had an idea that well and, and to be honest we had so many songs that like we, we had the idea we were going to put it on vinyl so there's only so many songs you can fit on on so two two sides of vinyl. So I thought, well, 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 it's the words high definition have to be in the album somewhere. Um, yeah. If if that's what it's going to be called. So I thought, okay, I came up with the idea of just well, let's just let's just record something in the studio. Um, and we probably recorded a couple of minutes worth, and then we said to Tom, who who is uh, who works at UTC Studios in Stoke, um, who's, who we recorded the album with. Uh, Let's give a shout out to him because he's he's done an incredible job on it. Um, so <laughs> yeah. I said, said, yeah, said to him at the time, like, right, we've probably only got like 45, 50 seconds worth. So just, just, just put put together that bit, and he he, he put some cool light like, effects on it and stuff, and like some back added some backing vocals, and we're like, yeah, yeah, we really like that that track. And then sort of the more we listened to it, we're like, right, well, we need to do sort of do a full length version of that. 
So then we kind of had the idea that, okay, we'll go back into the studio at some point and start playing around with it. And then it wasn't really until we were sat there and we thought, right, well, we should do make it rather than just doing a long version of the same song, let's make it sound a bit different. Um, so we were just messing around with like different like drum samples and things like that. Mm-hmm. And then Tom was just sort of flicking through the flicking through various options and then we were both like, Oh yeah, we like we like that one. Yeah. Um and then yeah, then that just had this sort of kind of yeah, really sort of old school hip hop vibe to it. And we thought, oh yeah, well that's yeah, that's pretty cool. Um and then there's actually a bit in the in the song where I think I just say I'm seeing I'm seeing the world over and over again, which is kind of my version of rapping, not really, <laughs> not really, not really properly rapping. But but we just sort of said, oh well, you know, it'd be good if we, it'd be cool if we could find someone like on the internet or something that could actually rap on it. And then Tom just said, casually says, well, I've got this lad coming in in a few days who who I reckon might be up for it, so I'll ask him. Um, and then yeah, it sort of went from there. Really. Oh, great stuff! And um, <laughs> just um, as well, guy. I mean, guy. Unfortunately, but you, you are there. Yeah, you can, are there. can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, we can. Yeah, had some there, technical yeah. issues yeah. there. So, uh, welcome along to the uh, to the show. And so, I'll bring you in now. Then, just to talk about the um, the debut album. Then, really, so kind of yeah. like what was what was the recording process like? Um, and 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 the writing the writing for that. So it, it kind of evolved. Um, over the course, so we've been together as a band just just over a year, uh, probably a year and a half now. Um, and like me and Tris had a few tunes kind of in a back pocket, ready to go. Um, that we've some of them we've had them well over 10, 10 years, maybe nearly fifteen years, which is probably showing our age a little bit. But <laughs> we, we we always wanted to get them recorded properly, get them on an album. Um, and those, I guess, the process of those was back in the day. Tris would come with like an acoustic track. Um, I'd put some lead over the top of it and then we'd, we'd take that to the rest of the band and we'd put the drums in and the bass and kind of build it up from there. And that's how it kind of started with, with our first EP that we did um, before the album. Um, but then as, as we sort of grew and um, got, got together as a, as a band, there's, there's other tracks that we started to build together as a band and some of them in particular, like Black and White Shades of Blue, was was just a jam that we did in in the um in the rehearsal studio that started off as a bit of an acoustic thing and then we all just chipped in and we, we're jamming it for pro- probably about fifteen minutes. <laughs> and I don't, don't know if anyone else is is going to like this, but it's really fun to play. Yeah. So took that into the studio um, and and you know, a couple of the other tracks we'd, we'd kind of play along to a click track, try and get the the beat sort of spot on. Mm-hmm. But that one just wasn't quite working as we'd expected it to so then tom just goes well let's forget the click track you guys just jam it and we'll see what it sounds like so we did that and first take we absolutely nailed it and that was it so that that was a totally different approach to to kind of some of the other tracks some of the earlier tracks so yeah it it kind of evolved as i say um and then yeah there's a there's a few where we, we didn't really know where to take it and then in in the in the actual recording studio we, we kind of did it on on the fly and that was kind of a cool way to do it as well so diff, different approach for, for different tracks really yeah there was a few there was a few where i was sort of stood in the uh vocal booth and we didn't really know how the song went and i just had like the rest of the band just like, sort of shouting through on the microphone say try doing it this way try doing it that way <laughs> Had some had some words to sing, but they sort of talk, taught me through how, how it should sound, and then yeah, do a few takes and cobble it together on a, on a few. Of them. Brilliant, and 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 then so kind of like there, you, you mentioned the EP and, and the album. Was that kind of like then the first time that, that you like personally had ever been in this like recording studio before, or you know you had previous experience? What was what was kind of like that like for you guys? Yeah, it was it was the first first proper recording process we'd done. Like me and Tris had done. Um, like little open mic stuff on Facebook, like during lockdown. So yeah. we used to run an open mic night in in Derby. So then COVID hit, and um, we, we we took it to to sort of Facebook Live and got got quite a few people involved. So that was kind of an intro to the the tech side of how how do you set up live recording? But we'd never never been in a proper studio before. Um, so yeah, it was really cool to do that properly. 
Yeah, sure. And and when as well, when you look back, um, like over the recording and and and, and kind of like the year, like twenty twenty two in in general, what kind of like for you are the sort of like or for both of you really, what kind of like are the highlights? Um, you know that, that really like in particular stand out. Well, for me, um, like Tris mentioned, the arena that was that was absolutely mad to to get onto that. Um, like some some of the stuff that we've done in the first year was just just bonkers. Um, like we we just we just wanted to like start a band, get some tunes out there, record an album if we could. Um, so the fact that we did, yeah, you know, we we got the album recorded, got it got it pressed to vinyl. Um, people actually buying the thing. Uh, and then ended up launching it all um, at, at the arena. It was was absolutely crazy, really. Yeah, and and how about you, uh, Driss? Um, yeah, well, I think probably well, probably the best gig we've done. So probably one of the best moments was actually right at the right probably about a year ago, right back at the start of last year. Um, we played a, a free gig in um, the Rough Trade in Nottingham. Um, Bank or the Muders had, had invited us along, and like uh, yeah, we just sort of turned up for that, not really knowing what to expect, and uh, it was absolutely packed the place was. So, like uh, yeah, that was that was kind of like the probably the most fun we've had, like uh, yeah, uh, along the along the way, um, because yeah, we just yeah basically played to a packed venue, and I guess this was just before we started recording like the songs for the album. So yeah, it sort of yeah gave us some real confidence on some of the some of the new tunes that we're that we're sort of looking to put on there. Um and then and then I think the other kind of the other big one for me, like favourite moment was just like probably the last session we had in the studio before we released the album where we just where basically everything was recorded but you just then sat reviewing the songs, listening back to them, tweaking a few bits here and there in the mix. And but yeah, just being sat there on the sofa listening to these tunes thinking I think we've got we've got a decent album together here actually it's sounding sounding pretty good um because you can always have the ideas in your head of what it will sound like but it very rarely sounds much like that once you've once you've got it down and recorded um but but equally that's one of the things Tom's so good at is like you don't have to say too much to him and he, but he'll know what what kind of vibe you're, yeah. you're aiming for Sure. Oh, it's a great time. The album, by the way, is better than decent for anyone listening that hasn't got it yet. It's, it's fantastic. So, and obviously you guys as well, just sort of, you mentioned there that the Derby Arena gig, obviously live music is, is obviously very imminent for you guys um, in a couple of months time or so. So you've got um, Sporting Marples at a network on the 23rd of March in Sheffield, um, March of the Mods um, also in Sheffield, uh, which I think it's the following week, the 31st of March. And um, we've all, Proceeds going to teenage teenage cancer trust, um, and as well brick cop brick pop IF cons even hurricane number one on May the sixth in Hull. So kind of like how excited are you um, as a band to be getting back, you know, back out there on the live scene again? Yeah, it's it's been uh, been a while. I can't remember what the last gig was that we we did. Tris, can you remember? It's it's been a while. It was uh, yeah, we played um, Victoria in Birmingham, didn't we? I think in that was the- it. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's been a while. So yeah, I'm personally looking forward to getting back out there and uh, yeah, supporting some some really really good bands. And and that's that's probably one of the other highlights that, um, for me is you know through, just through doing this and, and playing live the the amount of quality bands that you get to meet and see. Um, you know, probably shout out a few of them that we've we've played with. Um, but the the, the fact that yeah you, know, you get to see them and otherwise you probably wouldn't wouldn't get the chance or you it's you rely on word of mouth a lot of the time aren't you so you know people like death of the high street favorites of ours um sort of derbyshire band um really really good to try and try and get down and see them when, whenever they're doing something live obviously marseille who, who you know yeah um yeah we've seen them come from they, they used to do the open mic nights that we ran in town right, and now, right, now, okay. now they're doing real you know proper shows and yeah. i think just announced a tour aren't they so yeah um yeah marseille um and then yeah there's there's, there's plenty of others we supported a band called the illicits um no, no, last no. year we've, we've supported liam gallagher before mm-hmm. so yeah just just the opportunity to see some of these some of these bands and then yeah some of the others marples look, look like they're really good 
good lineup for March of the Mods as well. And then Hurricane Number One. Um, we're all big fans of them. Um, anyway, so yeah, get get the opportunity to go and support them and see them live would be be amazing. Yeah, sure. Certainly sounds like it. And then kind of like, obviously, as you know, you just sort of mentioned um, a couple of bands there that, that we champion ourselves here. This is the music. We're obviously, you know, want to help promote as many bands as we can, obviously, like yourselves. So kind of like then over the past sort of 12 months or so, who, what bands have been in particular catching your eye that are, you know, at the grassroots, grassroots level type of thing? Well, so I think, yeah, I was gonna say I think guys already mentioned uh, Death of the High Street. They'd be they'd always be right near the top of my list, and certainly for seeing live, I think they're probably you know, one of, up up there with very best live bands I've seen. Um, so yeah, they're great. Um, there's another band actually from from Derby who I think deserve a shout out. Uh, the Telephones. Um, so they're probably a bit more mature in age, a bit like ourselves. <laughs> than some, of, some, of these, some of these young upstarts. Um, but yeah, they released an album. Um, last year um i think that was sort of quite early last year um and yeah like yeah i bought that on um bought that on vinyl because it was yeah re- re- really good album really really good album um sort of gave kind of reminded me a bit of some of the corals albums kind of a bit of a right, okay, sort of, yeah. bit, bit, bit of psychedelic sort of vibe but but just really really good songs um mm. so yeah that yeah they certainly deserve a shout out i'd say and and, uh, oh, yeah. I was going to say. I think, um, yeah. I was going to say the, the other the other band I was just going to mention was um because we actually went to see them the other night, didn't we, guy? Uh, the Public Eye. Yes. Um, yeah. And Don. Um, yeah. So they're, yeah, again, that they're, they're lads we sort of know from from the open mic days of a, a couple of years ago, and uh, yeah, they've 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 made um they've made huge strides as well in in the last year or so. Um, and yeah, they like yeah, it was the first first time we'd actually got to got out to see them. A, a proper gig uh, the other night, and uh, yeah, they sounded super tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan of the public. I'm sorry, guy. How about you? Yeah, so there's a few I've mentioned there. Um, probably the other one that I'd, I'd mention is um, a band called The Matchbox, who um, yeah. was a gig we headline in Birmingham. They were one of the support bands, and they were they were clearly the best band on the night, weren't they? Uh, um, they, they were just just awesome, um, really tight as a band, great sound. Um, they've got a tune called Closure, um, which if it, the week leading up to the gig, I just had that on repeat because it's it's just so so good. Um, so yeah, they're, they're really good lads as well. Um, so yeah, they they stuck around for the whole set. Um, I think they're from Manchester way. I think yeah, I think they're yeah. the sort. Of- I think they're based at Manchester because of university, but I think I think the I know the lead singer is originally from Hull. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so definitely check them out if you haven't already. Yeah, some great some great recommendations in there, and I think there's a there's a couple in there as well for me that I need to uh, to kind of like check out um, at some point as in the, near, in the very near future. So we're gonna um, kind of like drop some some quick fire questions at you now. Um, so first of all, um, what three musicians would you invite on a night out? Other than the band, <laughs> uh, you can go for three bands if you want. <laughs> go on, Trish, you go. Well, you'd have to invite Liam Gallagher, wouldn't you? I think just for instance. Have to, yeah. And then, to be honest, if you're inviting Liam, then just. Just for a bit, add a bit of tension. You might as well get Noel out, aren't you? Just, to, <laughs> just, 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 to, just, to, just to see how that goes. Um, go on, guy. Let you get. Let you add the third person. Um, I've, I've got to say, Paul Weller. He'd, he'd be good value on a night out, particularly with those lads. Yeah. He'd show you. He'd show you up with his dress dress sense, though, wouldn't he? You'd, 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 whatever you wore, you'd feel like a bit of a scruff bag stood next to Weller. <laughs> definitely so playing live or being in the studio oh it's a tough one so for me it's probably studio i think like like, like not, i guess nothing can quite be- recreate the live buzz but also when you're going to play live a lot of it a lot of the day and a lot of the time is a bit of a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> so much sit, setting up and waiting around and stuff whereas like at least when you're waiting around in the studio you can like just sit there and eat 
while other people are doing their things and uh, and you and then you can still sit there and direct other people and tell them what you think they should be doing so because <laughs> you're paying <laughs> for it <laughs> Because you're paying for it in the studio. You don't want to waste a second, do you? So it's like no, straight to work, it. no chat, just yeah. get on with it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think I agree. Okay, brilliant. And what's uh, what's your favourite film? Oof. Oh. Should probably well, think of a cool one, but I don't know. Yeah, I think my, to most Forrest Gump's probably always been my favourite film. Yeah. That's a and it's one. got, I, that's got I, a really, really cool soundtrack as well for us. Yeah, mm. yeah. Le- less cool than that. Um, I actually really <laughs> like the the last Top Gun movie that came out last year. I was expecting <laughs> it to be rubbish, but it was really good. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And as we are, we're recording this at lunchtime, so this is quite apt, I think. What is your um, favourite sandwich filling? Ooh. And is it, and more importantly, is it on the menu today? <laughs> uh, for me, I'm a big fan of cheese and beetroot, actually. Crusty cob, mm-hmm. cob as we yeah. call it around here, which is yeah. the right way to say it. Um, yeah, cheese and beetroot cob. Yeah, so I've, I've got leftover roast chicken for my lunch in my sandwiches. So, yeah, I think I'd, I'd, probably, I'd probably put that up there. Nice roast chicken sandwich. There we go. So we're not just a music podcast, we're also a, a sandwich filling uh, conversation as well. There you go. So um, let's let's have a little talk then about football. Um, Tris, I'll come to you first. Obviously, I know that you're a you're a Derby County supporter. Um, yeah. Obviously, you've had um, some pretty bad years over the last sort of three or four years with the financial uh, irregularities and obviously the points deduction and all that. But obviously, new manager Paul Warren, you're flying high at the moment, aren't you? Fourth in the league. Um, is this going to be the year that you're going to, you know, put a bit of a smile back on the faces of Derby County? I hope so. Yeah, it's long, long overdue. Um, but yeah, it's yeah, it's all going, it's all going a bit too well at the minute, actually. Like as, as a Derby fan, you you always you've always kind of got that something in the back of your mind that says, how can this go wrong? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think we're I think we're 18 games unbeaten now, and uh, yeah, it's all it's all going a bit too well at the minute. Um, but yeah, Paul Warren's come in and he's um. I'll be honest. I, when he first came in, like the first few games, I couldn't really tell what the plan was. But as as it's sort of just generally come together a bit, um, yeah, they, they look pretty solid unit now, Derby do, and uh, and yeah, we've got sort of goals all over the pitch. So yeah, I think God, I, th- I think top two is probably a bit too much of a stretch because Sheffield Wednesday and Plymouth yeah. are doing really well. Um, but yeah, we should make the playoffs, and yeah, hopefully. Uh, Hopefully, come the end of May, I'll have a smile on my face. <laughs> well, that smile might actually come on Monday evening because you've obviously got um, you're playing my team, West Ham, uh, in the yeah. FA. Um, are you confident yeah. off an upset? Um, I, I think we've got a good chance, actually. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, it might depend on what team West Ham decide to field, whether they're resting players in for the relegation battle, but. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I think Derby will give give West Ham a good game on Monday. So yeah, I think, I think we've got a chance. Yeah, that's what worries me. <laughs> and you can't blame the TV cameras for put, being there as well for that inevitable uh, loss. We haven't lost the lower league for a little while, so we're we're, we're probably due one. To be fair, um, a guy and obviously can see there in the background. You got your Nottingham Forest flag yeah. uh, flying high. Obviously, pretty mad. Uh, transfer window back in the summer with the the twenty two new players coming in. Yeah. Obviously, you've just signed three more as well um, in, in in January. But I mean, obviously, everyone obviously was sort of taking the Mickey a little bit with with the amount of players that you signed. But at the minute, thirteenth in the league, looking pretty good. Yeah, yeah. And as as the games go by, feeling feeling more confident. Um, I mean, it's been a mad year for Forest because you know, it started when Cooper came in. He, we were bottom of the league with one point. So yeah, it, it's just been been mad, and, and like Tris says, you, you kind of you're always waiting for it to go wrong. You know, been been to playoff semi-finals before and you, you snatch defeat from the claws of victory, and it, it just just happened to go right this time around. Um, and yeah, some summer was mad, but we had to buy a load of players, and I'm sure you know the, the story. A lot of loan players, a lot of players yeah. out of contract, so we had to buy all all these these players, and it was always going to take a while for them to to bed in and I think Cooper you know I wasn't sure about him at Premier League level at the start of the season but he's 
he's he's adapting like the players are, and he seems to have found a way to play that that's worked. Um, yeah, we, we we beat Liverpool, should have beat Chelsea. Um, yeah, we've gone on a decent run now without without losing. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I, I think some of the players have brought in Morgan Gibbs White looks different class. I can see him playing for England one day. Mm. Um, Probably after Southgate, because probably too too much of an attacking <laughs> threat for for Southgate to consider somebody like him. Um, but yeah, it's it's looking good, looking good. I think uh, be interesting to see how Chris Wood plays after we brought him in. But we're, we're desperate for a striker because we've got a few injuries going on. But yeah, it's looking good. And uh, and obviously cup semi final uh, first leg this yeah. year against Man United. Yeah. How do you feel yeah. about that? I'll I'll be there cheering the boys on. Um, probably less confident about that. <laughs> um, particularly, you know, obviously they lost, but um, mm. you know, they were looking really good. Rashford's on fire at the minute, so a bit bit concerned about that. But it, it's all about just staying in the tie, isn't it? If you can get out of that first leg, maybe nick a win or you know, maybe even a draw, and then see what happens in the second leg. In a way, it's a shame it's a two leg one because it kind of favours the bigger bigger side, doesn't it? So yeah. Yeah, fingers crossed I've we'll get something. Time I've ever felt like a Man United fan, actually. That semi final. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. And and kind of like then um as well, just got just got sort of going away from football and, and back to the music side of things. Kind of like then what else um is planned for the Mees for, for this year? Obviously we've we've mentioned a couple of gigs there that you've got coming up and, and anything else outside of that that you, you've got planned like gig wise or like maybe a new music release or something, anything like that at all? We're just trying to get out and around the country a bit bit more. So we, we sort of dominated the Midlands last last year. And uh, yeah, we're, we're trying to get out. Um, yeah, there's, there's one in Oxford that we might might be um, heading down to. Um, we're trying to get up to Scotland as well. Yeah, Randomly, we had a, a, a bit of a flurry of vinyl purchases from a, a, a group of guys in up in Ed, Edinburgh, I think, Glasgow, Edinburgh, somewhere, um, over the weekend, and they're, they're begging us to, to get up there. So, um, yeah, w- watch this space. Yeah, we'll probably, yeah, probably be clocking a few miles on the car, I think, uh, I think this year. And then, then I guess, towards the second half of the year, we'll then, uh, I guess we've, we've sort of got tentative ideas for album two. Um, it's got a title. Got a couple of songs, um, so yeah. So hopefully towards the towards the end of the year we can uh, properly get teeth into that. Great stuff. Well, it sounds like it's going to be um, a very very exciting twenty twenty three for you guys, um, and I'm you know really really excited to, to see um, what does happen. Um, unfortunately, that is the end of the This Is The Music Meets The Me's podcast. It's been great having you both on. Um, as I said at the beginning, finally nice to actually meet you sort of face-to-face, so to speak, rather than, uh, in you know, social media messaging and all of that sort of stuff. Um, but before you do go, can you let all the listeners know where they can find you on social media? Yeah, we're on, uh, we're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and now TikTok as well. Mm-hmm. Um, we are at the Mees Band on on all of those platforms. So come and have a look at us. We're also on all the streaming platforms: Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon. Um, and then come and check out our online store as well. We've um, we've got the the vinyl, CD, we've got T-shirts, uh, tote bags as well. We've got all sorts going on. So uh, definitely recommend the vinyl. Come and have a look. <laughs> well, I, I second that there with the uh, with the vinyl, um, and we'll we'll include the uh, the links there that you've just mentioned, and obviously the uh, the Bandcamp page as well for the for the album. Um, yeah, as I say, it's a fantastic album, and we'll say so we'll put that in the episode bio. Um, all that that leaves me to say is to thank everyone for listening to the latest. This is the Music Meets podcast. Um, if you could please subscribe so that you never miss out on any brand new episodes. And if you are loving the podcast, show us some love uh, by giving us a five star rating and a written review as it really does help the artists uh, that we interview to be discovered. Thanks for listening. Guy, Tristan, thanks again for coming on. And uh, we will see everyone else very, very soon. Cheers, Mark. Nice one. Cheers, Mark. <laughs>